Hey everyone, Kodandi here, reporting to you from Nithyananda Pitam, Bengaluru Adinam, and I am an Adinavasi. I'm a long-term resident here. I just completed the Sada Shivatwa program, and I wanted to talk about some of the new things that are happening here. So. Every year in December, my guru, Paramahamsa Nityananda Swamiji, he has a special Inner Awakening program. Uh, Inner Awakening is this, currently it's a three-week program. It's going to be expanded to four weeks, but um, for now it's, it's something like 23 days or 25 days. But every December he does a special one where he releases all of the new th things that he's been working on, the processes and everything and so it's sort of you know new and big and exciting and so the people that go to that one kind of you know they 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 get to be the first ones to do this stuff i mean here the adina vasis you start kind of getting it first but as far as it being offered as a program and being offered in a group the december program people get it first and so this year he's integrating a system or a process or a tool called Aushada. And Aushada, it is, it uses herbs um, and it is, it's, it's very similar from what I have seen, which is not a lot, but it looks very, very similar to European uh, medieval and Renaissance alchemy and knowing what I know about the history of European and Renaissance alchemy the Europeans learned it from the Arabs the Arab traders and presumably they learned it from India so it looks like European alchemy it, it looks like it might be descended from this traditional Vedic Aushada and, you know, last night we saw one of the Aushara processes of how these different, um, different herbs and materials like camphor and lime, uh, mineral lime, not like lime juice as far as I know, are used to create these, um, I don't even know, like these tools, these substances. Uh, we got to witness that live it was really really exciting and I was like almost in the front row it was so cool to see so cool to witness but over the weekend there was this two-day program called Kalpataru initiation into Mahasara Shivoham where we did another Aushara process used another uh, type of Aushara tool which was using these fresh leaves that were folded up and we held them between our teeth and kind of crunched down on them enough to get the juice out. And while we were doing that, we were led in this process um, using breath to take our consciousness to a higher dimension or to a different dimension. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think when we're talking about dimensions, there's a, I, I, yeah, I don't know. But a different dimension to Kailash, which is the realm of the divine realm of Lord Shiva. And it was so interesting. It was really, really interesting. I'm, I'm really curious about the potentials for these Aushada processes and how these different Aushada tools and materials can help us because what happened? Okay, so we're sitting there. This actually, this was like, um, I think it was three nights in a row that first we started we did this process where the guru, Paramahamsa Swamiji Nityananda, um, using, aligning ourselves with his breathing, everyone aligning themselves with his breathing that he can, with breath alone, lift us up into these other places. And so the first night, it was the Ganesh holy day. So he used us, used his breathing to lift us up into Kailash enough that we could see uh, the Hindu deity, Lord Ganesh. And it was wildly successful, not only with people here present in the Adinam, but also with people who were connecting through two-way video conferencing as well. Uh, so that was really, really fascinating. And I had a very positive experience of that. I very, 
very clearly saw Ganesh. I saw his face. I saw his eyes. We, he had an interaction. Um, my consciousness was really definitely on this other level, up at this Kailash level. So then, over the weekend program, we were to go into Kailash, and we were to meet Sadashiva, and, you know, that kind of thing. And so the first night, I think I only got to the gates, but there was a lot going on at the gates, honestly. I saw Sadashiva there. I saw Adi Shakti as well. So I saw, you know, I had a vision of Lord Shiva sitting there in this chair, and the chair was like the sun. It was just this amazing, radiant color. And he had all of these arms that were all very busy doing things. And then I saw um, Shakti, the goddess, had been somewhere, you know, I don't know, something. But she, she kind of like stepped out of him. And I don't know if she stepped through him or stepped out of him or what... You know, this is a different dimension. I, I don't think uh, space and time are exactly the same there. And so I had an amazing interaction with her as well. And she was really beautiful. And, you know, just her eyes and her, you know, touching her feet and the way she was dressed. And it was really, really beautiful there. And so then the second night, we did the same thing. We had the Aushara leaves, the fresh leaves that we held between our teeth. Um, we did this, you know, breathing process, and we had our, you know, we, our consciousness was lifted up to Kailash. And this time, it was more intense. I felt like I went inside the gates, and what I saw was that there were so many dancing beings that everyone was dancing, and I had more interactions with Shiva and Shakti, and they were so beautiful. I had some issues that I had going on that I was able to take to them directly and resolve with them directly. You know, like you go to temples and you pray, and you have faith that the message will reach your deity because, you know, you have faith that this temple is a power center and that the deity images, whether they're two-dimensional or three-dimensional, are energized in such a way that your messages can reach the deity through them. But here, you're being lifted directly to the deities, you know? Like, you don't have to go through the temple. You don't have to go through the statue. You don't have to go through whatever... You sit in this process and you just go directly to the deities and you can be like, hey, I'm having this issue, I'm praying to you for whatever. And it was so nice, it was so nice. And I saw Ganesh again and I got to go around and there were all these other beings. There were so many other different types of beings. There was, I saw the mountain, um, you know, the... The, the Kailash Mountain, the physical mountain that is in uh, China, I guess, or Tibet, I don't remember. And I saw, you know, just this huge pillar of light that connected our Buloka Earth Plane Kailash to similar power centers for Lord Shiva on other planets, other planes of existence, other dimensions, I don't even know, all these other places that were connected through this pillar of light. And there was just so much going on that everyone was dancing and celebrating. And even if they were working, they were dancing and celebrating. And I saw these little, like, um, you know, like little apartment kinds of things. And just all the stuff carved into the, the stone of the mountain. And, you know, just seeing all these different beings. And, you know, seeing the connections as well. You know, recognizing some of these beings as the kinds of... Um, elf and fairy type beings that I am familiar with from the Celtic culture, from, you know, Britain, ancient Britain, Scotland, Wales, the beings that I've encountered there, and also from Norse mythology, the, the stories of the different realms of Alfheim and Jotunheim and all of those that, you know, recognizing these deities that I'm seeing in, or these beings that I'm seeing in Kailash, all these different types of beings connected through this pillar of light seeing the similarities between that and the stories coming from 
you know, Norse mythology and, you know, Celtic folklore about fairy beings and, you know, fairy hills and things. So it was, it was really interesting to, for me personally to see the connection between, you know, like the, um, the, the things that I'm really more familiar with and educated in, the, you know, Celtic folklore, the, you know, the Norse folklore, the Norse mythology, the Celtic mythology, seeing it connect back to these Hindu traditions and these experiences that I'm having here in India, that was really, really exciting for me. And so it was just... You know, like, this is real. This is really, really real. And I've talked to so many people that had similar experiences that really felt like they were having an out-of-body experience. And then, you know, I talked to people that were like, wow, I saw colors and I saw a mountain. I was so excited because, you know, that's sort of the the first step for them, that they haven't had these types of experiences before. Whereas, you know, I've been seeing spirits since I was a child. I've been doing you know, visionary journeying and astral travel and things like that for years and years and years, for like 20 years. And so, you know, I'm kind of familiar with these things already, but people that are not, just seeing their excitement, even if they don't get like this wild vision of, you know, everyone's dancing and there's these beings that are blue with no hair and these other ones that are as small as mice and, you know, all of these different things and the atoms are, you know, infinitely small and infinitely large at the same time and, you know, even if they're not having that type of vision, that they're having visions that are exciting to them, that, you know, they're just learning to see these things. And so, you know, you don't have to be like some super psychic, you know, new age know-it-all to do these processes. These are for everyone at every level with any level of, of experience with, you know, no matter what kinds of problems you think you might have, no matter what kinds of blockages you think you might have, just come here and experience this because it's it's real. It's really real. And if you have ever wanted to have these experiences, here, here's your chance. Here's your chance. So the program itself is called Maha Sada Shivoham, and it is hosted here at Bengaluru Adinam. Uh, Nithi Nithinanda Pitam, Bengaluru Adinam, outside of Bangalore, India. I will put all of the details in the description box if you're interested, and I will keep you updated. Today it was announced there was there's another program coming up September 9th and 10th, more about the Aushada itself. And um, it seems like Swamiji is going to be broadcasting a lot of these Aushada making sessions. There's another one tonight. I don't know about future nights. I don't know when you're watching this video, but I will do my best to keep up with informing you. And of course, check my Facebook, check my Google+, check my Twitter, check my um, whatever other social medias, Tumblr or um, yeah, Snapchat, all of them. Um, I will be updating information as I receive it. So if you want immediate updates about what's going on and when and everything like that, please subscribe to all the things that are relevant to you. And yeah, I, I hope this helps. Ah, okay, I'm so excited. Nithin on them, everyone.